Oh yo, how's it going? Back once again with episode four of the podcast. On this episode, we've got Lee Mills, DJ Millsy, former resident of Fusion, hard house DJ, and all around versatile tune selector. If you do enjoy the podcast, then feel free to follow us on social media. We are on Instagram and we do have our own community group on Facebook, which is It's Time to Refresh Podcast dash community. Uh, You can ask questions to the guests, get early info and any bonus content related to the podcast. Hey kids, what time is that? It's time to refresh. Uh, And we're off. Uh, This is episode episode four of the podcast. Uh, On this episode, we've got uh, Lee Mills, uh, DJ Millsy. Um, well known within the hard house scene and um, clubs such as Fusion, uh, you're doing a lot with the Fusion reunion and well basically a local legend if you don't mind me saying <laughs> How are we doing? Alright? Not too bad, thanks for having us. Um, I just want to get straight into it to be honest with you um, because I don't know your history so and we've only like sort of briefly crossed paths yep. now and again um, but I just wanted to ask how you started out essentially. Right, yeah, no problem. Um, I started a job at Sellafield uh, in an apprenticeship and a lad who I worked with um, said you fancy swapping some decks for your, one of your mountain bikes because I used to mountain bike quite a lot back then right. I ended up swapping, some, swapping one of my old mountain bikes for a set of decks and loads of zone tunes <laughs> well, So did you know you were into, like, into mu- like music? No I wasn't, I wasn't even into it I just, I just, I just done it because just, just random eh? just yeah. asked us Oh, class. Um, and so, so I spent I spent a few months just trying to learn how to DJ on yeah. on. And so it was what Italian tunes, I assume. Italian, yeah. yeah, which is obviously quite hard as well. So what year was this? We're talking. I must have been nineteen. Nineteen. So I mean, I don't know how old you are. But I'm, for, I'm forty six. So. Oh, so what? It must have been late nineties. Like something like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, massively into mountain biking as well, eh? Yeah. Uh-huh. I see a lot of like the the views and that you post on your. I'm back in, I'm back into it now, but I, I wasn't when I was doing gym. Yeah. Um, so then you started out doing the Italian stuff. So sort of where where what direction did you go in from then? Were you just bedroom DJ? Yeah, well, was, bedroom was there a DJ around you, like uh, at all. There wasn't really any clubs. There was passions, and there was there was Main Street, which was ISIS, but it was called Main Street at the time, and yeah. there was four of them, obviously. So were you going out as a rave clubber type thing at the time? Yeah, we were going clubbing and stuff, yeah, yeah. tall trees and stuff like that. Right, and, and what was the, the, the scene of music? What was the, what was the, at the time? Back then it was like, it was when dance music was just, it was basically dance music, it was on Radio 1, you had Judge Jules. Yeah. And chant, you know, you had classic trance, and it didn't really have genres like it has now, as such. So you were there for the the peak of that euphoric uplift and transfer. Yeah, 99, 2000. Oh. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. That's, that's, my, that's the year I wish I, if I could get it around at any time, because a lot of the stuff now I listen to, it's still I'm still stuck in that moment of 1997, 98 mostly, 99, 2000, and that's like my... That, that was the year for trance and stuff, I think, yeah. definitely. It was, that that was, I was going to mention this as well, I, when, I, when I went to Solfest last year, we went sort of last minute on the Sunday, um, the, sun, yeah, the Sunday afternoon, and then I, I went over to the, the the dance tent, or the hive, or what it's yeah. called, yeah, and I seen that you, I heard some like um, euphoric, big euphoric stuff, and I was like, I said to my missus, we're going to have to get over there, so we went over, and I seen that you were on, I was just like, Oh, this is class. Like, cause, cause no, cause it's, it's not something you eat out all the time. No, I was, in, in nightclubs and that now, there's, there's no, you don't hear uplifting trance, do you nah, really? No. Nah. So the, yeah, no, what was a time it, to be to be raving, mm. but like class. In good so, times. So where were you going at this point? Like, so you were saying? I wasn't. And, I was just. That was just a thing that happened. It wasn't. It wasn't part of a plan to start DJ. It was just. Yeah. He said, do you want to swap a bike for some dicks? And I said, yeah, you might, might, might not. Yeah, that's, it's, it's weird, isn't it? It's yeah, like, no, it, just, it, just, it, just, it just happens, doesn't it? You don't know. So uh, so was it you entertaining your mates or like when you were bedroom DJing, what was what was it? You were we DJing at like I was just parties? I was living at my mum's and it was just trying to, just trying to learn to mix. I mean, yeah. It was <laughs> drove her insane. Were, were your mates into it? Of, of, uh, yeah, yeah, a few of my mates were. We started, well, Hard House came about around about the same time. Yeah. And all my mates went to Hard House, so we would go away clubbing to Hard House. Right. And then well, started, started buying like, Hard House records and stuff. What, what what sort of tunes at that time was were in Hard House? What was... <laughs> Tidy Tracks was always quite big. Yeah. Um, mm. They sort of sort of hit the mainstream around about then as well. Yeah, they? yeah. 2000, 2001. Um, so where did you go from there? When, what was your first gig? 
It's like knocking about with Simon Kennedy. You know it's Simon. You know Simon, do you? Yeah. Um, we, have, we we talk when we see each other and that. Uh, yeah. I think I last seen him in like Aldi or somewhere like that. Oh, we, ended up, we ended up getting sets at the forum, but it was when the forum was like on its ass. So. Yeah. Uh, ISIS was, I think it was, I don't know if it was called ISIS at the time. Tim J was DJing there right. and it was just cleaning up. Right. So, so we, 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 were DJing a few, we were DJing at the forum, but there was nobody going. And then we found out, Simon found out that Ron Adams, right. was, um, he was building Fusion. So we just wrote him a letter. We went to see him. Wrote him a letter, handwritten. Mm. That is awesome. Read, read him a couple of mixes. That is which good. Which probably weren't very good, I can't remember. That is class. And he offered, he offered us a. Isn't he? Like straight away, I went for a meeting with him. And so, what were you playing in the forum? What was the the, the music? It was, just, it was just the same like your picture, you know, like what, what was this big at the time. I think it was like stuff like Music Sounds Better with You, Stardust, and right. So it was more dis- of a, dis- a, a charty thing. You couldn't really go off into your own venture. No, well, I mean, such. when we were doing it, it was just a, it was just something we were doing. There was nobody coming in, so it was point. It doesn't, you know, might as well have been no music on. <laughs> yeah. um, to be honest with you, I think I'll, I'll get Simon on, you know, I'll, I'll give him a message because I think he's got a good story to tell as well. Like, yeah. Um, I yeah. know he, he plays more slower stuff now, he plays more the house, he, like, he's right into disco and stuff, isn't he? Yeah, he's doing well. <coughs> um, so then you were, wrote the letter to Fusion and then you got the residency. You went to see Ron and, yeah, he, got, he gave us a residency and then so the rest of history. And can there was you remember the opening night? Or? The opening night was Thursday and it was September 99, I think it was October. I couldn't tell right. you the exact. What was the thoughts that like process because it's quite a big step up, isn't it, with regards to size and and scale. yeah, I was just like throwing writing at the deep end, I think. And what was all, <laughs> was all your mates coming that night, or what was what was was there a, an excitement and a buzz around having a new nightclub in in the town? Yeah, aye. Well, you could see it being built, couldn't you? It was when they were building it. It was massive. Yeah, I'll tell you, I was only like three year old, four year old. Yeah, time, so yeah, so <laughs> no, well. yeah. Uh, so no, I never seen it when he got built. I just seen it obviously when it was. Oh, well, one was tech, one of the tech was in with Tony Waring, and he was showing us around when they were building. It was good. Yeah, good crack on that. Yeah. So what when when you wrote the letter, what were you what were you asking? Like when you were asking for a residency, were you saying you were going to play a certain style of music, or what what was the? Well, we, we kind of we knew, we knew Ron because we we knocked about with his son. Yeah. So it was it was it wasn't someone we didn't know. So we, talking yeah. to him, we just said you know we'll t- we'll play whatever it needs. I think whatever it needs, right. So when when you when you opened up in the first opening months, say the opening year, what what type of stuff were you playing? Well, the opening year was it was ninety nine two thousand. So that was when you would you would um, judge deals would be on, uh, on Radio One. Yeah. And you'd be playing all the big tunes like System F Cry or. Class. And it was back then when there was the tunes like that were coming out, like yeah. Warrior and. That's that's unreal. Like, was, I, 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 do you know it's spacious because it's like it's the stuff I listen to now, and I just think. I was around. There's, when, there's some cool stories behind the tunes as well because obviously we went we went on mailing lists then because it was just back in the early days. But we just you just like you'd hear a tune, just say two kind of like a rainbow for instance. Yeah, we'd go through to we'd go through to uh, I think it was called I can't remember if it was called Revolver Records. It was the one under the arches and then Pink Panther, right. and he would just show us all these new tunes. And then yeah. me and Simon would fight over who was going to buy them and who was, <laughs> and who was going to play them. And then yeah. like uh, some some tunes you buy it and you think like say two can you think oh that's a tune. And like first two, first few times I played two can yeah. people hated it. They, they, they didn't enjoy it all. I kept playing it and kept playing it and it just got you gotta like yeah. you force um, it into a big tune. We, we, I think would you say it's different now to what it is back then? Like what what I'm saying is with regards to like breaking a tune now, like the, but obviously if you you've net round off all these tunes, um for instance we'll say System F Cry, that that's an anthem now, isn't it? Yeah, like yeah, definitely. is it harder breaking a tune now than then, do you think? Would you say? She was saying you were repeatedly playing the two can like. Yeah, to to get people into it. To thing. get people into mm-hmm. it. So, is it? Would you say you struggled more then on on now for like? <laughs> well, no, it was it was good back then because you'd have the Judge Josie show and yeah. like you say when you first pers- first played System of Cry, I was like, what can I? What the fuck's that? And then, yeah. and then you have to have a copy. Yeah. And so, obviously you won't get a copy till maybe a couple of weeks later. Because is it because the music was on a grander scale? So on Judge Jill's Shows you would you would get millions listening to like Radio mm. One. Well, so, people the thing is people were going out to Fusion and they've been listening to Jules yeah that night Before, and then yeah. they did see Smith cry and then you play it in the club and they're like yeah so then it becomes an anthem. And it becomes an anthem but that way. That's maybe something that's missing in the modern day. Would you say? Yeah, just because it's you know they're not getting the they're not the getting radio, the exposure. The is no. it really? You can like a tune could come out one week now and it could only get like a couple of thousand players because it's not getting they're not getting the airplay. Like, ex- well, no. international exposure is it? That's what it is. And that's mainly because, well, the way I think it is, like I say, back in 99, 2000, 
You said it's trance, isn't it? Yeah. And, but it, it, it wasn't really called trance as far as I can remember. I mean, when the likes of Castles in the Sky and stuff like that started coming yeah. out and then Pretty Green Eyes, that was like the start of like that genre, yeah. wasn't it? You know, it wasn't really anything like that beforehand. Yeah, it was. If you know what I mean, it was club just music. It was just club, club, yeah. club music, yeah. You know, yeah. You, you could you could you had System F Cry, which you class as trance, and then you've got like. Gardaway push, which you could class as house. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, 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 just loads of tunes like that. That, but yeah. they just you didn't call them house back then. So what happened next? What was when when you you're out playing every weekend? Are you meeting the faces of of the town and um, other DJs? Like, cause there must have been a couple on the rise then as well. Yeah. Within it. Back then, DJing obviously, DJing now there's a lot more doing it. There wasn't that many. There was a, there was a few from Whitehaven that are, you know are still doing it now, and there's a few from working. Yeah. But it was like a new thing back then. So. It, well, not a new thing, but you know what I mean. It wasn't wasn't as big as it is now. People want to do it. Absolutely. There's, there is DJs <coughs> pop up everywhere, don't there? Yeah. Did you con consistently do the DJ? Was it because you, obviously you got the decks, but like you had that passion for the music once you were hearing these trance tunes? Was mm -hmm. it? Was it you were? That's like, where the, that's where the passion came from, just by doing it. Yeah. And and you sort of at this point, I know obviously you're saying Judge Joe's and Radio One is um, sort of pushing that that trance sound of that time. That's what was big. But did you feel like a bit like you were bringing a new sound to the area? Because up yeah, well, until that point, it was like wasn't Italian, any, wasn't it? Yeah, there wasn't. I mean, there's still a big Italian crowd now, isn't there? Yeah, massive. You, there, was, you, there was there was nothing like that, was there? There was nothing like that in Cumbria, really. No. Was it was just it was just good time, and I think it was good time, and the, the, right, club, the, the, right the club opened. We managed to get a, a, a residency somehow, and the, the club opened about the right time. These tunes came out. If yeah. that makes sense, it was just perfect. What was it like on like the grand scale of things? Were, were you getting a lot of out of town as to the club? Or yeah, there was people coming from all over. There was quite a big, quite a big following from Keswick. Right. Um, it was a few came from all over, really. Carlisle buses and stuff. Right. Back in the day, but yeah. But because the, there wasn't anything that size or that scale anywhere no, else. No, no. I mean, you've obviously got yeah, like the park in Whitehaven, but it was just a standard size nightclub. It wasn't. It yeah. wasn't what you would call like a, a big room sort no. of thing. Um, you had a couple of things through in Carlisle, but as I said, a lot of things opened and closed. Ninety nine, two thousand. This was something brand new. It was fresh. No one knew what to expect. No. Would you say? And it had, it had a decent. It, they put a Martin sound system in it. It was one of the best. Like at the time, one yeah. of the best you could get. Right. Anyways, so from there, where where are we where are we going? What what sort of come next? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was, it was, it was, there was me, Simon Kennedy, and Pete Barty, and we we started having um, big name DJs on every Saturday. Right. Club like club nights and. So who were you getting in? People like to relate to what you you've talked about on it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So who would you who were you getting in at the time then? Um, at least a pin up. Yeah. My band and block on Lisa Lashes. Judge Jules, Paul Glazeby. So you can sort of you can sort of read of what was going on at the time. It, it was, was very much hard house and trance, trance mm. and the, the, uh, uh, a mashup of, of that. Yeah, yeah, the Sunday Central tour. Yeah. They came up. So was were you networking with these people at the time? Were you, were you obviously you wanted them to production or anything at that point? No, right? no, no. So were you were you giving demos to them or anything like that? No, I didn't do anything like that. No, yeah, just, just so you, you were happy just doing I was happy just doing what we were doing. Right? What year does this take us up to then? Uh, from from there, are we, you, you're getting the, the weekly Saturdays in. We are, we are holding like um, big big events, like I say, a bank holiday. Yeah, and stuff I mean, like it, that. I think it held, is it, it held two and a half thousand with, with the chill out room when yeah. it first opened. Some nights they, they had that in like, they had that in those numbers in on, on Mad Fridays and stuff and it was just insane. Right. I mean, it, 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 it's mental to see that like, if you think about Judge, Judge Jules came, obviously. Mm. We think like Judge Jules at that time was like like it's like Marco said he'd have been in the top ten DJs in the world, like on the pole. Yep. And like you couldn't get that in this area now. No. Like, well, I'm almost certain you couldn't get it. I don't know any promoter who, who would be willing to put their hand in the pocket to pay that. No. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's insane at how DJs evolved over the years and like the more like celebrity superstars now aren't mm, they? Yep. With, with regards to the, the top the top ten DJs in the world. Is there any sets that stick out in your mind from that time? Like was there a, a moment in There's time? Some, we had some good nights, like um Millennium New Year's Eve, we had Fragma on. 
Yeah. Mm, we had Marky Claude as well. As well, we had them on, and they were they were actually Fragma's lightning jock. The, the crack behind the Fragma crack was obviously the, the, the tune got picked up by Positiva, and I think a guy in Blackpool had made the bootleg, right? The original bootleg, and yeah. Positiva like obviously realised how well it was doing, right. and then they released it properly. And the, didn't the, the pull it down? The, the pulled it down because. She never clearance for her for her vocals and had to get it re sung, didn't they? Because yeah, yeah. it was released as a, like a, a dub mix at the beginning, wasn't it? It, it was, was just a, it was just a bootleg, I think. That, yeah, yeah, it was just Talk of Me, wasn't it? I think. Yeah. yeah. Quality tune though. I don't know why. It, it's not it's not one of them tunes I listen to all the time because I'm not. I always I always thought it was overplayed. Mm. Like it was always in a lot like, of tunes were overplayed. But, I don't know. I get two two in the moment with with, with certain tunes and stuff like that. You'll play like something will come on on, on, on like my shuffle on my playlist now, but like. Or take you back to a certain time and a place. Yeah. So when you think when you think of like um, Fragma, do you think do you think of the Millennium Two Thousand? Like is that is that what it takes you back to? Yeah. Mm. And, and it, it's a funny story. Me and me, me and Simon went to pick them up from because there was there was four of them. I think he was yeah. called Dirk Duderstad, and I think he was he's the other guy with him was called Duderstad, and that, that was that was Fragma. Mm. Were you DJing, and then were you still going out as a as a clubber at the time? Yeah. As well. So at this time, we we uh, two thousand would have been. So there'd have been like a lot of like hard house events on around. Were you into the hard house at that time? Um, it was around about the time I did get into hard house that that, that era. Yeah, and what was? But it was just it was just a case of going clubbing. You know, yeah. I wouldn't play in or anything. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I played the odd tune towards the end of the night, maybe. But... Yeah, but there wasn't like a want or need for it just yet. No. Um, so <coughs> at this point. Is what what's the the club like? Like um, who who have you got on every weekend? They'll be yourself, and then who but else? there was uh, there was three of us. So there was there was Pete Barty, right? Uh, Simon Kennedy and me. And what we'd do we'd, we'd do like we'd do the the hour each, like the, the warm up, yeah. the middle or the, the last hour, and right. we just we just used to rotate. And then obviously the the guest DJ would be on in between, right? The middle and the last. And that's so how it works. It's like three complete different styles, isn't it? Like mm. I know yous are all versatile because I've heard you play various. I will. You, you would, so say say I was doing the first hour, I'd just play house, and then say yeah. Simon was doing the middle, he'd play for the middle music. Right. And we just we just rotated like that. Mo- like moving forward again, what have you got any any memories that stick out from that time? Like um, any any stories about say any guests that came up and you've you've just had a, like a real. <laughs> Good time, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of some. I've got some good stories, like. <laughs> I was playing in France. Um, this was my, my first international gig, and it was like um, a big. Uh, how can I describe it? It was like it was a big deal for me because it was like it was. I only started playing the harder music at that point, and um, it, it sort of I, I was I was just like amazed that I got asked. And anyways, I, I went there and I was. Um, we got like spoiled, like uh, I've never been tra- like ever since. So we got picked up at the airport by the club manager, um, and he took us to the um, <clears throat> he took us to the hotel, and I was with another guest uh, that was on as well from another country. I'm not going to name his name mm. for obvious reasons. We'll get into, but um, and they, they took us to a villa and they booked a villa for us for the weekend swimming pool. We, the, the thing was we just shared it, and he was he was a. Uh, he was amazed that it got tracked like this as well. Like, cause yeah. obviously it's it's unheard of, really. Like, when when do you ever get like that type of service? Like, as you say, you go and pick them up from a train station. That's probably and uh, take them to a premier inn. That's the thing. But they they'd made this like a big occasion. Um, and anyways, we were we're at the uh, thing, and he's in the swimming pool and that. And then, do you know when you just got a bad feeling about someone? Yeah. And I was just like, he just he, he didn't give a very inviting vibe anyway. So I try and have a crack with him and stuff like that because like I, I talk people's heads off. Yeah. But he was just like. Very stern. No. Didn't want to know. Yeah, didn't want to know anything. So, anyways, we got we were getting picked up at like five o'clock. Uh, the club opened at nine, and he was like, "Right, we're gonna take you out for some food." And not. they took us to like a Michelin star restaurant. Yeah. We had like a duck leg, and it was it was really nice, like really really good. But we we're getting in the, in the, the the transport to the thing, and he was going, "I want some, I want some some drugs now." And he's like, he's like, well, we'll sort you out when you get to the club if you want. He's like, no, there's no guarantee. I want my drugs now or I'm not moving. And they were like, the promoter was like, you could tell how serious he was and how stern he was in his voice. And I was just like, this isn't going to, do you know what I mean, going to end well. He was being really stubborn. Believe it or not, he's never been booked 
again since so it sort of tells you what it was like. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we had to they had to make him a promise that they were getting delivered to this Michelin star restaurant, right? So we went, we went for this nice food. It was it was lovely. Do you know what it was like? It was like what's that tea room you go to? The chalet. The in in Keswick. It's like the small tables and that, and it was like quite intimate, and it was it was really really nice. Mm. But like it was like a uh, fancy food. Not a bit too much for me, but if you get it for free, then why not? Huh? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So we went <clears throat> we went to this we went to this thing, and he's and he, he was like he was getting real abrupt, like slamming his hands on the table and that. Like if you want me if you want me in your club, this is what you need to do. <laughs> And it was like, I was just thinking, what a dick. And they're like, do you know what you, 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 you'd be embarrassed on behalf of someone? Yeah. And then anyways, the, they had to go to the, to get somebody to, to go on a moped. The, um, and he, he drove up to the club or whatever he'd got. I don't know what he'd got. And he, he'd come down to the, back down to this restaurant and gave me it. And he was like, after that, he, he turned into a different person. Yeah. It was like, it was like right, that's it, that's fine. But, but like once he'd got what he wanted, he just demands. Yeah. So he went to the toilet and that and, and took whatever they gave him. I, I don't know what it was at the, at the time, to be honest. So we're just sitting there and he, he comes back and he's all jolly and we're, we're going down to the club. And it was like a bit of a surreal moment. Basically what happened was we, we went in and there was people outside queuing up. But like they had like, they'd been given boot like copies of our mixes out and we were signing yeah. them. Like just like absolutely <laughs> zedless celebrities. It was embarrassing. And, like, not embarrassing, but like. And they had no clue who we were. They just no. promoted it as this is a foreign DJ coming. Like absolutely no clue who we were. Um, and we went in, and he like he walked past everyone. That he didn't do any pleasantries or like that. Yeah. Like he was just so stubborn. Um, and then we got in the club and that, and the the warm up DJ was on and uh, playing and and we were in on this balcony look overlooking onto the the dance floor. It was getting rammed, and this guy was going on before me and. He passed out on the seat. He just took all of his drugs that he'd been given <laughs> and he just passed out. Um, I'll show you photos when we get off the thing. Oh. Well. It's bad. But, like, um, he couldn't do his set. He couldn't do anything. And then they had to get one of the glass collectors <laughs> to hold him up. And he was, he was he's quite a, a large lad as well. Yeah. I had to hold him up on the decks while he'd, he'd done his set. Hey, oh, like... So, going into the mid-2000s, what was what was the scene like at that point? Like, what, what was the local area like? Ice is closed down after a while. Where's that actually? It's where with the spoons is now. It was, oh yeah, it was, Sorry, yeah. Main, it was called Main Street, and then it was yeah. and he did, he right. named it Isis. So what were you playing there as well? Played in there a couple of times. Um, what was the music policy? Um, it was just same as what it was around town, really. Uh, Passions all... and stuff like that. Right, right. A bit, a bit of everything. So what? So what clubs were you playing? Sort of mid two thousands. Were you fusion? Isis? Just just fusion. Yeah. Really. Um. Were you building a reputation for yourself at that point? Like, what were, like would, would would people know you? I, so, I, I don't know. I suppose yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess people. So start, obviously, uh, I mean, when it when it happened when when I was DJing there, and obviously, like you're saying, people start getting to know you. Yeah. You, you just it was happening, but yeah, we just. Uh, but you are building your own following, aren't you? That's yeah, but you're you're doing, it, you? just I I was just going and playing music, but people see you first, and it's like, oh, there's. Thing. Yeah, right. Like you see, it's it's similar now. Like you can go out to a supermarket. And it's like you'll see people who who were in the twenties then, and they've all got kids that now, and they'll see you and they'll give you the oh, all right, how's it going? Like yeah, I mean when I, when I bump into people, it's people, it's people from that era that, that, that know me more than the, yeah. the new people. I mean, I can go around town and work, and nobody knows who I am. Yeah, if I go if I go electric super or whatever, yeah, maybe a handful of people. Yeah, and it's just but like, at that 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 moment in time, like you. You you were integrated within the, the mm. community, and you were or the DJ from Fusion, like yeah. I mean, we're talking twenty years ago. I mean, I've done it for ten years. It's scary, it's scary it's, isn't it? Like it's, it's, of, yeah. fast it's, it's, it's extremely, it's, it's extremely scary. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, had you done a tidy weekend? Had you been as? as uh, we, we've been clubbing, every, and we, I think we've done a few tidy weekends, and we used to go to Leeds, yeah. just clubbing and stuff. Right. Like obviously, the gate crash and stuff like that. It was just when the clubs were really, the clubs were amazing. Yeah. Well, you see videos and that now, and it's like it's like I said I've said on the previous podcasts I've said like back then if you got if you got four hundred people in a club you were disappointed, mm. but four hundred people now at a rave it's like it's like a standard, isn't it? Like do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so <coughs> have you got any stories about going to your first tidy weekender or? Um. Obviously, it was it was a brand new concept for its time. Like I know you get like the Scar Weekenders and the Motown sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah. But like what it was, it was a new idea, wasn't it? it yeah, it was. Mm. It was. It hadn't been a rave, so no. to say. like a three-day so, three event. So, 
just out of curiosity, obviously I wasn't around at that time. How were you hearing about these these weekenders? Because you didn't have the social media no. or anything like that. So that's a, that's a good question. <laughs> Um, was it was it like I'm I'm just speculating so I don't know is it, is it mixed it, mag it must have been mixed it must have been magazines and stuff like that right so you you what and you were just seeing and thinking line up look Steve mm, you get mi uh, obviously you get mixed CDs on the front of them and some of them were hard house yeah mixed CDs that's back probably, in the day yeah, back yeah. in the day that's probably what got us into it right so what what was the culture like in the area we used, was a few years going down. To, to the weekenders, or was it just yeah, there was a handful of years? What was a handful of time? There was quite a big, there was quite a few people in the hard house back then. Yeah, um, because <laughs> I know you you did get like you had for a, for a time you had like a really good hard house following. It wasn't just like a fusion. I'm talking about this area, the, the area yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah, quite but, a few people got into it, but like you say, people change, don't they? And, yeah. and they, and they grow up and they move on. And they have kids, yeah. and it, it kind of just went like that. But. Would you say that it was it was well established in the area? Um, I would say if if you think of England as a whole and you just use hard house as a genre, I would say Cumbria was probably the worst worst county to do it in. Really? Oh, uh, <laughs> and I mean, like the likes of Newcastle as well. We go over to Newcastle, and there's there's a few people over there that are into hard house, but that was the same. It wasn't really the scene. It, yeah, it's not really. Much as soon as you start going down south towards Leeds, Birmingham, then it was just. Massive, uh, massive, massive, massive scene. Massive, well, yeah. I'm saying massive, not not massive, massive, but it was bigger than you could you could have a night. You yeah, could, oh yeah, yeah. You could you could put a night on. So, um, two thousand and six, two thousand seven, and smoke smoke and band came in then for obviously it affected a lot of places, but it affected fusion massively. Um, what what was it like, sort of the the later years? We'll say two thousand and six to two thousand and ten. So, um, uh, well, at some point between when when it opened. In that ten years, Luminar just bought it. Yeah. Um, and then that's when they came in and they wanted to change the music policy and everything. So we had a bit of a. They wanted it to be really commercial. Um, so we kind of like, you know, as you do as a DJ, meet them halfway. Right. So what you were playing? Try and keep them. Try and keep them happy, but then try and keep keep playing some good tunes as well. Yeah. So what were you doing? Playing like like remixes of commercial. Yeah, music I mean, or? I got on a few mailing lists like um, Hyperactive and Euro Solution, where they just send you. You do, right. you do your charts every week. That's how I started getting the new tunes then. Right. So then you were like, having to appease like both sides, like the 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 clubber and yeah the, the industry. And I, I think probably then it must have been when, when a company comes in and changes the music style like that. They they've obviously been looking at the numbers. Right. And it was a new company, and maybe they wanted they thought it needed to change, but I mean you, you were still getting good numbers at that time. Weren't you? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not good. So, so we carried on for ages, and then it, it, it ended up being it was me, and then they got other DJs on, like they got Tim J to do the Saturdays, and they got Dave Coates, yeah, a lad called Jimmy C. He he came up and they just kept changing the DJ. Right. So there wasn't like a solid structure at that point. No. Well, um, one question that we got in from I'm sorry I've, I haven't got a phone on me, but um, we got a question on the group, and it was uh, how did you meet Andy? Because how did you meet Andy? Yeah, that's. A, it's it's because obviously a lot of, a lot of people uh, who will listen to this will have heard your your sets with Andy um, yeah. from the club and it was always Millsy Andy Kelly sort of well that, that around about that time that's when Andy started DJing and we just used to we got to the stage where Dave Coates would do the the main night and we'd do like a bit of warm up in the last hour and then the last hour was like we thought to ourselves well it's the last hour you know that's when people usually go home anyway so we'll, we'll play some good tunes in the last hour and that's what we ended up doing. Right. But you, you did actually build like a really credible reputation for that last hour. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I, I wasn't even there, but I, I know. We had some good nights, like. Yeah, like I know a lot of people still hold the last hour in in like high regard. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they, I'm not not licking your ass or like that. But like, <laughs> it, it, it's just how it is. Like, if you talk to somebody about fusion, a lot of a lot of people that roll off the tongue when when they say it's you and Andy back to back, and it's like. Yeah. So how, how did that? How did how did you meet Andy? Was he coming in as a clubber? Or? Do you know what? I don't know. I can't remember when I first met him. I, I, I can't remember the situation. Is that yeah. his name? Oh, right, I just sorry. like it's like annoying. So was it? Was he? Did he? When you met him, was he a DJ? Or? Yeah. Right. Uh, so sort of was he? Yeah, he was. He was a DJ, and it was just he, he was DJing back then, and he he was doing sets, you know, in ISIS and stuff like that. Right. But then he started DJing in Fusion, and that's when we started. We started, we started engineering our house as well, which was... 
So what's the year's sort of? Two thousand six-ish. Two thousand six. So what? What? So we're getting to the production side of it as well. Um, what? What were you? What was your first production together? What was? Uh, what, was it a hard house tune or? Yeah, well, we we just basically um, we didn't really have a clue what we were doing. Really, we just we just made a tune and we called it, we called it in my house. And we sampled loads of stuff off some other hard house tunes. Right. And we got Andy got an email off um, Mark Johnson who was like going oh, triple I tracks. Right. And that was one of the tunes that we would sampled. Yeah. yeah. For one of his records, of a tune he had on triple I tracks. Yeah. And he told us we had to take it out and redo it. And oh man! It was I thought he was going to say, "Oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll sign it as soon as we've used our sample." We got signed to a, a label called Housewife's Choice. I remember was, that. Was that Leeds based? Yeah, it was Leeds based. Yeah, yeah. by a guy called Locks, wasn't it? Yeah, so you you were putting tunes up. Were you were, when you made this tune that it is in my house? You say yeah. We were, were you playing that out in the club? Or no, we, we, we did not have the confidence to put it out. Well, you, it was too hard. We couldn't have played it in fusion. Yeah. So what what was that tune? Is that like is that proper like? Stomping? It was absolutely rock hard, yeah. Right. But we were just uh, testing the water. Really, I mean, Andy was just Andy was engineering, and we were just coming up with tunes. We made we made quite a few tunes. Yeah. And, 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 I mean, in my house. You listen back to it now; it, it sounds really old, but it got it was weird. It got a good following in Australia, yeah. but it was of its time, though. It, you, you say it sounds really old now, but yeah, at I mean, the time it probably didn't. It probably fitted in with what was getting put out. Yeah, it was just it was just it was just different back then. Yeah. But we, it was a different sound. It wasn't the hard house. It was it was quite a hard hard house sound that we were making. Yeah, um, and from what I remember, um, when I first heard Andy's sets, he was he was playing really like tough hard house. And it was like that sort of um, big heavy Hoover stuff. And yeah, it was know, like it had a name called Energy back then. Energy, yeah, mm. that's what that's what I remember it as. Uh, as you said, big, big in like Australia, New Zealand, and that mm. sound, isn't it? Yeah, uh, they, they like the music a lot harder over there. <laughs> they've, got, they've got Grady G and Nark. <clears throat> so, so we're coming up to like sort of you, you two, well, coming into your two thousand and tens. Were so you what were you? What style of music were you putting out then? Like, were you, were you still putting out the, the hard house on various labels? Were you still working together at that point? Um, we were still making tunes, but we didn't really. We were getting them released, but it, it wasn't really like. We didn't have any. We got one. We got in my house pressed on vinyl, which was pretty good. Yeah. We've got the vinyl still, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, still got the vinyl. Excellent. Um, Completely different now with music, isn't it? With the MP3s and that. If you wanted a tune now, yeah. or back then, if you wanted a tune and it was only on vinyl, you, 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 if you couldn't get it, you were. Kind of you couldn't just download yeah. it or copy it off someone. It's somewhere. so accessible now. Mm. Um, we said about am- breaking anthems and that before. Like, it's something an like anthem if you can go onto the internet and get it as soon as you exactly. Think I mean, the whole idea of listening to a tune, like, say, System F Cry on the radio, for instance, that was the only place you'd heard it then, and you couldn't really, you couldn't go home and just download yeah. your own copy of it. So you, had, you you needed to go and buy it on vinyl if you if you wanted to listen to it, not play it out. I've, I've talked to people in the past, and like, there's a lot of people out there who aren't DJs but the big tune pushers. So yeah. like. They were, they were they've told me in the past that say for instance they would get um they would hear a tune on the radio knowing full well that they were going to go and play it in the nightclub say if say it was in the park or say say fusion or something like that and they would drag the mates out just to show them this this yeah, yeah, tune right. in hope that it might be it might not even be played but in no. hope that if it comes on they can go this is the tune that i heard sort of thing so because there wasn't a shazam or anything back then do you know what i mean yes yeah. it it's it's a, it's a whole different different ball game now. Yeah. So the back end, we'll we we'll got move on to the back end of fusion. Um, that that sort of was dying off. What 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 did you have in your head at that point? Like, what, were you driven to get into other clubs or? Um, what I think was the thought. I I got a few residencies in town after fusion. I DJed in Royal Oak and Elliot's. Yeah. But I mean, that was like you couldn't. We were playing just more commercial stuff. Yeah, you know, to keep people in the, it was basically people come in the pub and you've got to try and keep them in. Right. But you, it, it, DJing around town, it was you, you soon found out that the people would come on the circuit no matter what you played. They were coming for a drink and they were going. You, yeah. you playing tunes wouldn't keep them in the pub any longer in working. Yeah. Everyone was just doing this. Nah, this we'll go for a pint here, a pint there. Yeah. Pint there, and then, and then the, Royal Oak at the time, Royal Oak was the place where everyone went before fusion, or right. then it would be Elliot's. Yeah. It'd be like a like, almost like a meeting place, you know what I mean? And that'd be the last pub everyone would be in and it'd be rammed. Yeah. And then when fusion opened everyone went fusion. It was like that for quite a bit. So we're now moving on to sort of so it's it's closed down it wouldn't be closed down in two thousand and ten. That's just what I feel. Mm, no. I, I I stopped I stopped DJing. It, 
It's got a bit much for me with the music. I stopped DJing it there after a while. Um, uh, and, and I think Andy carried on with Dave for, for, a, for a bit. For a little bit. Um, were you still into the, the, the DJing and stuff like that, or was, was it just... Were you just wanting to go move on to somewhere else, or what was I, it? I, I, just, I just had enough, I think. Uh, well, I think this is the sort of ta- time and era where I think I first met you, um, coming up to after post-fusion. So, um, post-fusion, it was... Um, uh, I can remember Marco putting a couple of nights on in. Uh, yeah, Mar- Marco came up with the idea of because I was just look, it wasn't massive in Cumbria, but it was. But you could fill. You, you could, home, you, you yeah, you get two and a couple hundred, maybe a yeah. couple hundred people in Royal Oak. Yeah. Oh, Elliot, so we had some good nights. Yeah. Some of the DJs came. I mean, a lot of DJ called Adam M. He came up. He paid some tough stuff in, doesn't he? <laughs> he was I, but he said it's one of the best nights he's had. Yeah. Just because it was, it was just. It's a very intimate venue because the, the DJ yeah, box was, was only uh, like two widths, uh, two people with. I mean, that I've seen. He's all like that because because there isn't that many people into it. Everyone knows each other. Yeah. It's the same in the bounce scene, I suppose. Yeah. But obviously, it's bigger. But it's just like a little. Like when, you, when, you put, when you put a night on, it's like a little rave, I mean, you know, yeah. you know everyone. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> you could describe it as a large house party. Would, yeah. essentially, isn't it? Um, so I think. I, I think you might have been on in, I can't remember, it was Elliot or the Open, I first seen you, I hadn't talked to you at this point, like, but I came in and it was, what night was it? We had, um, Marco put um, the Tidy Boys on in. Tidy, that's where I met you, that's it. Yeah, Elliot. Yeah, that was a good night. Tidy Boys and Elliot's, yeah, um, and there was Flash Harry as well, mm. is that, right? was that, is that think, the same night we're talking about? I think so. Yeah, um, yeah, that was my that was my first hard house night, that, because obviously... I mean, the Tidy Boys are quite commercial, so when you're looking at hard house, if you want, say... You're going into Elliot's and it's the first time. It, the idea is if people come to that Tidy Boys night and then they're not really into Hard House, but they have a good night, they maybe yeah. maybe think, oh, Hard House isn't too bad. Well, but, but the Tidy Boys are quite quite commercial, you know, and vocally, so yeah. you know they're the guys you want on to get people into Hard House. To be honest with you, um, I'd, I'd listened to Hard House and that before, but I wasn't. I was always in massively into my Italian and bounce. Um, so when I seen a flyer saying they were, they were coming up, I was like, right, well. I may as well try to see if I like it. I went there and it was like, as you said, they, 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 the commercial side of them brought me in. Like, it, it, yeah, it yeah. sucked mm-hmm. me in. So, um, and it, would you, like, this might be a little bit of a, bit of a bold statement, like, but would you say that was probably one of the only decent nights of that year? Like, there wasn't there wasn't much going on. There was only, uh, yeah, the, only the only nights I can think of are the Dreamland nights. Yeah, there wasn't they, much they were, going they on at that, that good. point in time. No. Um, and even with Dreamlands. No, it's that Dreamland started off, I think it was in Red House. And then we went to Royal Oak, and I think then he'd done some in Elliot's. Yeah. But um, I remember, two, was it 2000? So we're moving a bit further on now. 2012, 2013. Um, they had like Cali Gage on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they started putting some yeah. big names. Well, big names, same big Yeah, names. so like a big headliner, but like loads of passionate DJs like yourself and like. Um, mm-hmm. The, there was yeah, and there's some there was like Tom Haywood um, yeah and Borg and Borg and that all, I mean, all the passionate hard house all, all the passionate hard house DJs yeah. yeah in the in the area so the formula was there but it might there just what there just wasn't, wasn't enough of us <laughs> yeah that's what I mean but it's like wrong time would would you say if you brought something like that back now there would be um, no I don't think it'd be even worse now do you think so mm, yeah you, is it not, would you not see a resurgence in it. No, because I'd I mean, Ber- Burgos tried it. We, I did a mix for Burgos for that. Um, hard work, hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, what he was going to do, if he, he was thinking of putting nights back on, he was just going to, just like what you could do, just sprinkle a bit of hard house in towards the end. You know, do, do a bounce night and add a bit of hard house and try and break hard house that way in, in, into yeah. like the bounce scene, but it, ne- it never materialised. Um, he did that. He did ask me about that, and the idea on paper sounds so good. Would I know what well, this might get a bit geeky for some people listening now, but like. With the subgenres of, of of hard house, would you would you say what sort of like digital mafia is doing? It's yeah. a bit it's a bit slower and groovier. Could could it translate well with the local house crowd? Because the the, the I mean, I, house I, crowd yeah. around here is it, it's it's quite large with the younger. And I mean, the, fu- the funky sound of hard house, you could you could play that. No, but I, I, I think you know, it's, I mean, big vocals, isn't it? And big drops, yeah. big kickoffs. But I think I think that's what Berg had in, in mind. With it, he was like he was like play a vocal. Mm-hmm. Play, play essentially like te- like you would say tech house, but a little bit faster. So like um, I'm, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, like you did Digital Mafia's um, Ross Thompson, that, that sort that of like stuff, yeah. 
I mean, you could you could even go as far as play classic classic hard house. You could do a classic hard house set. Yeah. From like ninety nine two thousand, and it would sound like Scouse. Yeah. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of the tunes, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of the tunes had the same um, bass. That, that was the bass line for hard house back then. <clears> well, if you listen to a lot of, because um, obviously I'm massively into like the the bounce stuff and that, but if you listen to old um, cricketer CDs or like Sanctuary CDs, every in it, you like I don't know for a DJ, so say, say Desire Zone or John G or someone like yeah. that. They'll they'll play an Italian track and they'd mix it into like a brain bashers tune like like of that time yeah they, they didn't there there wasn't a set rule of what you can play I don't yeah. think you get away with it now but it was like you could play you could play like a Euro trance tune into into a hard house tune and and like yeah with with the, the ethos being anything goes as long as you keep them dancing but now if he hasn't got like a big heavy beat in the background like if you if you go to hard house night if Hard like nothing against hard house followers because they bounce a lot of the same. And I think that the hardcore a lot are the same and the Italian a lot are the same. If it if it differs differs too much away from, from that the sound they know, like, it, they don't like it. Like no. it, it's it's what it is. Um, a good example of this is um, <clears throat> um bad behavior. The the production group um, Bonley and Greeny. They they came back in two thousand and twelve. But Greeny had been doing um, came when um like the Jack and House night got big. Yeah. He moved over and started doing that type of stuff. So when he came back and done the bounce stuff again, you could tell it was a big Jack and influence within their sound. They did like a remix of um a track they released in two thousand and five, and it was um Rescues Someday. Do you know yeah. What I mean? Oh yeah. So they 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 did a remix of Someday, and it sounded very Jack and in inspired, and I liked it, but. A lot of the bounce lot hated it because it's not the sound that they used to. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine now in hard house because it's got that them people like yourself um, who've grew up with it, and it's like they're in their head they know what hard house sounds like. Yeah. If if you notice within hard house, there isn't a lot of eighteen year olds who's coming into it. No, there isn't a lot of young ones. It's, it's still quite an old crowd in hard house. Yeah. Yeah, but like if you try to differ away from the sound. It, people don't really like it no. as good as it is and then you'll maybe find 10 years down the line that that sound that was there was actually quite popular now it's, it's, it's very convoluted but yeah what, and, what and, point and you think that the sound's doing well for genre yeah. but it does evolve doesn't it yeah it just it, naturally evolves because people who engineer the tunes you get, you get bored of that sound you're making you're not going to get you're not going to carry on making tunes yeah I heard I heard a story from um I don't know who told the story, but it could be, uh, I don't know, but it was um, how Hard House was, came along was um, like Tony DeV playing, he'd play like random tunes, say like yeah, in, tunes, in trade. tunes in trade, and then That's how it finish with, That's a, how it with a faster tune, he'd, he'd engineer a faster tune just for the last tune. I mean, a lot of his old, a lot of Tony DeV's old productions, he, he, you could class them as house, really. They're just really tough house. Yeah. And they were played at hard house speed, and that's how hard house started out. Yeah, but if you back then, um, you 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 would say a hard house. You it could be anything from like one three five upwards. Yeah, it's over one fifty. Yeah. Uh, whereas now it seems to have, have chased it up at the BPM a bit. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, I mean, one it, the funky side of it, you, you could get away with one one forty. Yeah. Still, you know, you wouldn't wouldn't want to go much faster than that. Yeah, but I, I, or even one thirty, it, it sounds. Sounds it's good. very interesting. At, like I like I, I I'm fascinated by like how it all how it's all like evolutionized over time. So like you were saying when you were when you started out in in fusion that for instance you had um you were playing what you would call early scouse house with the with the trance tunes that then evolved into its own sound like castles in the sky and stuff like that. Yeah, and then, and, then, and that you were trans uh, scouse. You know, when Pretty Green Eyes came yeah. out, that was when it lost. It just kicked off, didn't it? That that became its own entity. Yeah, and that was the, that was just the start of Scouse. Yeah. And Rescue and BCD and just big tunes like that all the time. Uh, now, now we're talking about that. I just want to know, like, I'm, I'm, I honestly don't know the answer to it, but what what's your thoughts on like bounce music and stuff? Is it? Well, I played I played a hell of a lot of it in Fusion. Yeah. No, I don't mind it. I like I like the Rescue stuff. Right. I, I like stuff with like more of a high like a hypersonic. Baseline, yeah. which is more like a hard house baseline, I suppose you could say. It's like really pumping, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the. So I just I have always wondered what your thoughts were. Yeah, I've yeah. always known you as a bit of a of a trance hard house DJ, but I know I've not you've been known to throw played, a bounce tune and that. Played, played a lot of it back in the day, in fusion, yeah. Yeah, 
Um, were, you pl- were you playing it because that was what was popular? That or, was did you, or did you genuinely have any No, I, I enjoyed it then. I did enjoy yeah. it back then, yeah. Um, so I mean, I'm not saying it sounds like I don't enjoy it now. But yeah, yeah, no, no, I understand. You know what I mean? I was, I was really, it was, I was more into Bounce than, I would, I'd listen to Bounce, if that makes sense. You get, well, you get people um, or scouts who, or who go to events now and they're, they still, they're still in that 2002 to 2006 stage where the, all they want to hear is yeah. um, a BCD track. Like, some people get ca- captured in moments in time where it's like, it, they'll it, only it, listen to... It's, a, it's, it's, like the mem- it's like the memories, isn't it? The, 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 link. the link that's linked to it, yeah. Yeah, they don't want to change those memories. Mm. Mm. Um, I think a lot, of, a lot of bounce gets recycled as well um, we, because they know they can make a big tune out of um, something knowing that it's got a big recognisable vocal. Yeah, it's the same in, same in our house. Exactly the same. Um, we were also talking about um, a resurgence within, like hard to dance music. Um, so, for instance, you you bounce, you hard dance, and stuff like that. Do you believe it's come back around because all the eighteen year olds now have all grown up with their parents listening to going to fusion, going to yeah, possibly going, yeah. going to mm. the park, going to I don't know places. Well, in, they'll, they'll in be the park. people that are into bounce now. Not yeah. only the people whose parents were in fusion. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's a. Uh, it, it's just it's weird how it's it's sort of been recycled and it's like because it was dead at one point and mm. and there is a resurgence of, of of that like i i've went to like um barbecues and that with like family and i've got like younger younger like cousins and stuff like that they're like 15 16 17 and they're blasting out some like hard house or like or like like some obscure bounce tune i'm just like how do you know that yeah and it's just like well, so and so used to listen to it, and it's just that that's how it's it came about. Yeah. It's like it's quite in, in, insane if you think about it. It is. I I gave my daughter a lift the other week, and she was listening to a bounce mix. I don't know what, I don't know what mix it was, and I was like, "Oh, are you into bounce now?" <laughs> is that the thing? Is it just popular with the kids? Isn't it? That's yeah. Like, mm-hmm. If someone's someone someone's mate listens to it, and it's like that's that's how it how trends happen, isn't it? If it's like, yeah, oh, exactly. it's cool if so and so listens to it. So then I'll I think I'll give it a try mm-hmm. and see see how it is. Um, are you into any other music? I like that, yeah. I mean, I, I, I used to be into uh, heavy metal. I used to love... Um, heavy metal? Like, I, I know, with Guns N' Roses and Metallica and that when I was mountain biking. Uh, yeah, but I like, I like drum and bass. I like I like old... I like trance. I don't really like the new stuff. I mean, there's a, there is a good few tune, new tunes come out, but... Yeah. If I was, like I say, when I got asked to do Soul Fest, I thought, well, obviously, I'll do a trance set. Yeah. And I thought, well, I'm going to obviously go for classic trance because I think that's what... I think mm-hmm. it'll go down better. But right. I know that... I mean, I don't really know new trance... Because I don't listen to new trance really yeah. as much, so I couldn't really put putting a set together and downloading tunes. I was I was amazed when when you, when, I, when I heard the the sort of uplifting offbeat. Yeah, I, it wasn't like a modern <laughs> trance tune, so like I knew for a fact that someone was digging for like good good old tunes. I, I loved that. Of of all this time that that you you it's been going on, we we got to like two thousand and thirteen. We'll move <coughs> forward. Um, what what were you doing at this point? Because obviously. Hard House started to, to, to die down. There was, yeah. there was a bit of a resurgence for a while, and then I just DJ'd, DJ'd in town for quite a long time, like DJ. Elliot's and Royal. Yeah, yeah, just done that. Just for... You're still you're still travelling around the country as well as like. Country well, we, we were going that. clubby night. Um, I've got a couple of funny stories. I ended, <laughs> I ended a couple of DJ competitions. I seen it um, when I was at work. I said, Dave Pierce in the Daily Star paper. Dave Pierce used to have a page, and it was like a dance thing. And I noticed there was a, there was a um, a DJ company, so I, I done it at house and I just posted it down and thought out of it, and then I, I got a phone call saying you, you, I got through to the next round, and I had to go to, to the club terminals in London, right, to do like a set, and there was going to be judges and that, and I was like, oh, sounds good, but I can't believe that's driving to London. <laughs> so we drove, we drove down to London. It was like a fifteen minute set. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minute set, and it was like, it was in the well. It was in terminals, but it was it, the club was obviously shut, and it was just in the. In, it, I think it was in the back room. Right. I'd never been in terminals before. And then there was a guy come on after me. And he, was, he was scratching like Andy Kelly, so I was like, "All right, come on, then, guys, let's go." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you know who was on with you, like at all? Do you know any of the DJs? I didn't. I didn't know any of the DJs. No. Oh, so it was like a totally random thing. It was just a random. Th- uh, it was just a random thing I entered in the Daily Star. And I, that's a random. Like, mm, I've never had a DJ come in a newspaper. No, that's all, like, it, it, was, it was mad. I think it was about eight people when doing a fifteen minute set. And then there's, I think we, I can't remember if we stopped over or drove home. There's a few of us went down. Yeah, like saw what met supporting you and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, like a, sixteen hours for fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> was it a good night out though? Like, well, we just we just went there and then we, we, we just went after that. Did you? Mm, we didn't go for a night out in car. In, in London, so we got a set, I entered a, 
competition on bis- a, a website called Biscuit Monsters. Biscuit Monsters. Back in the day, it was something I banging tunes and that were out. Right. Those websites. Um, you know, one set in, one set for one set for Sunday Central at Europa in Leeds. Oh wow! Which was like one of the best clubs in the country back then. It was one of the best clubs in the, in the north of England, definitely. And obviously, I was just I was on first, just warming up. So we put a bus on. And it was right when CDJs had just come out, you know, the, the CDJs, the Mark 1s. Yeah. It was that era when, obviously, the, you'd had the Denon CD players. Right. So what? this must have been early 2000s, what we say? Mid, early to mid-2000s. Yeah. Right. I can't remember when they came out. What, I can't remember exactly what year it was. How was that? Like, it, so, so Robbie Muir, um, he, he, was a, he started engineering our house as well, and he, he moved in with us, and he, he'd made a tune, and... When I got this set, he's like, oh, you play my tune in Sunday Central? And I was like, yeah, well, I'll have to set my CDJ because obviously they, they just they didn't have CDJs in Sunday Central because it was just vinyl then. Yeah. So I was like, fuck it, I'll just take it. And I'll just, you know, I'll set Probably. the CDJ up. I'll ask you if it's okay to set it up. So anyway, done all that, done the set. And it was it was only us in there because it was like, our bus had got there and I was yeah. on I was, oh, on, early on, I was on first eyes. It was just a case of, it was obviously just like a market employee mm. to get us to bring a bus down, you know, with the DJ comp type thing. So I done my set and everything, and Eddie Halliwell BK was on as well. And I went right after my set. I went and pulled the funnel leads out of my CDJ, and Eddie Halliwell was on after me. He, he was coming on, and he wouldn't. He was like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, because obviously he he seen the CDJ. Thinking he was walking the box to see the seen the CDJ. And he thought it was. He did, I was like unpacking it, and he was like, "You can't take that." And I was like, "It's mine." And then we had to get the the guy who had done the DJ company gone home, so I couldn't even find him. Because right. I was like, right, I need to find the guy who's who's organised it all, yeah. so he can say that it's it's not the clubs. Right. So he, we ended up having to stop while Eddie, Eddie Alliwell used my CDJ. Oh, that's a story. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, luckily, I wrote my name on the bottom of it in, in permanent marker. So after right. after he set, I turned it over and it just, I wrote Millsy on it, and he was like, Right. Oh, hey, that's it's, quite, it's quite a mad crack. Um, what 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 type of music were you were you playing? Like what not what type of music, what type of tunes were you playing on the wall then? Just um, just out of interest. Yeah, I, um, like it'd be more funkier sound. <laughs> Was it? Mm-hmm. Right? So you were, so you were, because a lot of people I know, this is sort of off subject again, but a lot of people who do these comps, they just go in like sort of all guns blazing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it was. Were you, were you to have a, to have a crowd, DJ though? comp on in a club, you're gonna be on first, aren't you? The, yeah. the person who's won the DJ comp. So in in a way, he, that person's just gonna depend on who they are. They're gonna just go down and play whatever set they would were, were gonna play for the DJ comp, whether they're on first or not. Yeah, but like uh, what I'm saying is like. See, see this set because obviously, for I don't know what you were feeling like, but for me to be warming up for on, on a sub essential night, it's quite quite a big deal. Like, mm, like, for yeah, me personally, yeah. like were you practicing your set before and were you like no, nervous? That's, that's something. That's like something that. I've never never really doing. I never really practice my set or anything. Uh, I do more so now. I mean, I did yeah. I did for I did for Soulfest. I, I, I plan my set more now than I did back then. I'm not really much of a set planner. To be no, honest, I'm not. But, I never have been. But um, yeah, obviously, because you want to read the crowd, don't you? Yeah. Um, when you when you when you play, especially when you play warm up as well, it's like it's the hardest set of the night to play, but most rewarding. So like if you, you and your mate Scott there, they're not all gonna get on the dance floor at once until they've had a drink in that. No. You can get the foot tapping and on the dance floor, you. you you know, it was, it was right just now. a good thing just to say that I've I've actually DJed for in, you know in in your in, got to DJ in that club, even though it was basically we'd just gone in and opened the door and put the sound system on it, which just was in there. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no, yeah, yeah, it's some off the bucket list. Would, would exactly. you say that was a bucket list club? Yeah, oh, definitely. Definitely. definitely yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't say I, I don't know if I've heard of it to be honest with you. I can't say yeah, I have. Amazing. But um, obviously, if, if it's a bucket list club, it must have been something prestigious for you. Oh, me and Andy, me and Andy, uh, a guy called Clarky from Scotland right. started doing ha- nights called Hard Candy right. in, in Fusion, and he, he took us, to, he took me and Andy to Cavos in Edinburgh, and Scotland DJing for his night. Right. And we read, he had big names on like Just Jills and that. They, they were quite good times. So, we, we picked, picked uh, Lisa Pinup up from the the, the airport in Cavos. Uh, when it was yeah. and we got, 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 got on quite well with him. We nearly crossed the, crossed the jeep on the way back. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Scary times. But what were, you, what were you doing out there then? What year was this? Um, oh. this, is, this is interesting. Mm. Yeah, yeah he, had, he had quite a few contacts there. He, he, yeah. he, could get, he could get any big DJ he wanted. And he must have had the money and he was putting nights on. But obviously he was doing them in Scotland and they were, we were going to Glasgow and DJing and they were good nights. Yeah, so uh, what club was it you, you just were playing over there then? I couldn't tell you, you, know, couldn't tell you just, what it's called. We just turn up. And <laughs> just there, just there. I'm, I'm quite like, I would say I'm on the spectrum when it comes to like 
remembering things like I remember all the clubs I play I write it down as well just just in case I forget and, it's, and then someone's like can you remember this night or something I write it all down in notebooks um, and I write down like my record collection I've actually got it in a book wrote down um, record label A to Z and it's, it's, it's a bit sad but it's just my way of remembering yeah. Or if you got that tune, and then rather than like digging it out and realizing you haven't got it, but you have a memory of it and whatnot. So now I just if I've got it, if I if I've put a little mix together like that, and I've got the the, the vinyl out, I can just have a scroll through my, my book and that right. I've got that, get that one out and stuff like that. That's just me being a bit like particular with things. But yeah. With regards to clubs and that, whenever I've whenever I I play somewhere new or um or play a new event or. Like I always try and write it down, um, just for literally just for memories that to look back on, and it's like, right, oh, well, I did this at this time, and do you know what I mean? Like, yep. it's just it's just one of them things. It's I'm a bit particular and weird about, like I, I don't know, maybe it's just me. <laughs> but, we're, we're moving out at the moment, and I've put all my stuff in storage, and I was when I was emptying all my records, obviously I'm putting the records in my car and I'm finding ch- tunes that I used to play in Fusion and the sleeves are all knackered and I'm like yeah. picking it up and I'm thinking uh, the memories are, the memories from that tune so like you can yeah. tell you can tell I've played it quite a few times in Fusion because <laughs> the sleeves like in one, there's, yeah. only, there's only one at half like half a sleeve and it's all taped up it's like it's like when you were playing tunes there as well obviously a lot of it not, are you say none, none of it's planned because you've got a full night of tunes but you would like you would grab a tune and just throw it on and then you'd sort of disregard for the for the sleeve and stuff like that. Yeah. So you can tell a tune that's been hammered that's from a tune that hasn't. Um so through what we've talked about, have you got what what what's your favourite sets ever? If like if say your top three favourite sets. I asked I asked I've asked other guests this and it's just what 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 was just the perfect right time, right place and it just felt like do you know, I never thought I'd do this when I started out, like... Yeah, um, I probably should have thought of these. Soul, Soul Fest was probably a good... Yeah. I really enjoyed Soul Fest. You, I think you had, you, like, as I say, I'm not something you're asked not, but when I turned up there, there was a really good atmosphere. Like, it, it was, really it was a good atmosphere all weekend. At that, yeah. at that hive stage, it was brilliant. And nobody, nobody was, like, there was no... Everyone was in the zone with it. Yeah. Like if you walked onto that that stage because it was like it was like boxes around the the where the dance floor was, wasn't there? Yeah. And if you got in there, it was like everybody was tuned into the DJ, and every time you were mixing a tune in, as soon as they'd hear like the bass line or the kick drum of what it was and they knew what it was, it was a big hands in the air moment. It's yeah. Like, I mean, it that, reminded that... me of some from from when I first started. It was like quite. It was really really like nice atmosphere and pleasant and like. I remember when when I turned up there, the sun was just going down in it over the over the fields because yeah. it's like it's a big outdoor thing, isn't it? It's like just just good. I, maybe I'm just yeah, a bit. It was, um, it was amazing. The, the Saturday was amazing as well. It was the same same crack. It was just amazing all weekend. That that, that hive tent. Yeah. And all the DJs just, just played. Wait, absolutely so blind. was that we playing trance on the Saturday as well? Yeah. Or, yeah. Mm. Right. I mean, but most throughout the day they they were playing like tech house and prog, and I mean I'm I'm not really I mean I could play it, but I don't really own any of it, and we'd have to download it. And, so I thought I'll stick with what I know yeah. and what I enjoy, and it, I thought it's a bit of a gamble because it's it's been frog house yeah. and, and tech house all, all day, and I'm just gonna come on and play trance. It yeah. could it could have it could have fell on its ass, but it, luckily it didn't. you you got a big crowd. Mm, look, 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 luckily it was <laughs> um, <laughs> it works. But like like with the, I'm, I like the tech stuff now. <laughs> to be honest, I like I like yeah, tech I house. Know. It's got a very it's because it's starting to get a bit tougher now. If, mm-hmm. if you notice. And a bit faster. A lot of the bigger DJs, like your Patrick Toppin, uh, Ben Nicky, and stuff like that, they 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 support a lot of like um, tech house stuff. But they're playing it at a faster BPM. It's got yeah. like it's got really early hard house vibe as well. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's all about the baseline, isn't it? You, yeah. you need to with, with Soulfest. I listened to that tech house all day Saturday, Sunday, and it it, it was really some really amazing tunes. But you, you need you need to listen to it on a good sound system because obviously it's all about the baseline. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Um, for the reason that I can't really get into it that much is I'm a casual listener of music. So if you're just driving along in the car, you, you're not getting the full of effect of, of what a tech house tune is, are you? No, well, no. Not not to a great. Not unless you've got a good sound system in it. But that that hive sound system was quality, by the way. Yeah, it was. Um, it was a, I think he's gonna make it bigger this year or next. Make it bigger for the year. It's a function one. Yeah, it, it was quality. Um, if I was to ask you for three meaningful tracks of your times. 
gone by and why, what would you give me? 12-inch thumpers don't cross the line. That was like one of the iconic hard house tracks, the UK gold mix. Yeah. So and what, and what, what, where does that take you back to? Like what, what, when Night, you first 99, heard when it? When we first started getting into hard house. Uh, and then, I mean, you listen to it now, it's just, it's just almost like bounce. Oh, yeah, that, all mm. that stuff is, isn't it? The you, UK you gold Paul stuff James, is really yeah. like pumping... Mm-hmm. Um, you, you could probably play some of it in a, in a bounce set now and you could get away with it. Yeah. Um, I, I actually played a bit of hard house in my set. Um, what was it? I played not so long ago. I think I played, oh, the, was it The Last Sanctuary in um, Carlisle? And it was, um, the track was uh, Signum and Scott Mark, uh, Just Do It. Just Do It. Uh, the John Whiteman and Ingo remix. And that build up that goes on and on and on. I, I, I played that at a, at a bounce night and. I played it in between some vocal stuff and it just got because it was different it got a good reaction you yeah, know what I mean yeah. it's, like, it's one of Ingo's best tunes that definitely yeah. so what's your uh, number two tune then um, I've, I've got a trance tune for this um, Digger Church of Ra it was a night it came out in 1999 it was like a big it was on Kate Crusher I don't know what Kate Crusher album um, and why did you pick that then I just I just heard it a few times in Gate Crusher what, and then you just clubbing, and it's just you know when you just love a tune. So when you when you first heard it, were you were you running to the record shop? Like to, I, I, I ordered a copy. I think I got a copy of Juno when I heard it. Uh, well, I've I actually done a hard house remix of it as well. Uh, and then did you, did, were you blasting it out in fusion and that as well? Like? Oh, yeah, I played it a few times in fusion. It's, I mean, you, you listen to it; it's just a generic trance track, but it's. Uh, it's but obviously, it's good. something that you picked on that means something to you in that moment of time. It's just a nice trance tune, yeah. Yeah. What's your number three? Um. I, an old hard house tune, Blue Amazon, No Other Love, the Nick Rafferty remix. I don't know that tune, to be honest. Oh, it's well powerful. Is it? Brilliant. Um, maybe that's why I don't know. I, I, honestly... oh, well, you do, because I sent you that bootleg. That was the, the bootleg. Oh, is that, is that the original that is, tune, right? Oh, right. That's the Blue Amazon. That is a tune. <laughs> mm. And it's not that hard enough, though. It's not like... No, you, you toss it as a chance, I suppose. Yeah, it's yeah. Got a... Quality tune. Mm. Quality. So I was I'm impressed by that. Um, we were watching a movie on, was it, was it Friday night, and you sent it over. Just, what are you doing? I said, oh, I just need to listen to this. And I just thought, I'd just give it a, a listen and like get in, get in there, class. Oh, what what have you got for the for the future? What what's your plans? Have you got anything that you want to plug or anything like that? Like um, d- DJ wise, I've i pretty much I'm just happy just DJing at home now. Oh, yeah, and I mean I'll do a few live streams etc. But yeah, There's I mean don't get me wrong. If somebody said, "Will you DJ for us?" I would. Yeah, but I'm not really that bothered. Yeah, so yeah. You, you, you're winding down, sort of. Say, yeah, I'm, I'm happy just, just DJing um, for fun. Yeah. Have you got any sets coming up or out like that? Um, no, nothing. Nothing yet, no. It's mental, that, mate. Like, mm, I haven't even got a deck room at the moment because we, a... we haven't got a house. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you, you're in between at the moment? In between, no, I've got nothing set yeah. up. I've got to ask you, because uh, ask everyone who comes on, uh, do you like Chinese food? Do I like Chinese food? Yeah. yeah. So if you were to go to a Chinese and get a Chinese takeaway meal for one, what would you get? Usually get special curry. Special curry. What? What would you side? Yeah, rice usually. Or, chi- or chips. Fried rice. But I'll eat, I'll eat, to be fair, I'll eat anything. Eat anything. <laughs> uh, nice one. Um, I appreciate you coming on, mate. It's thanks very much. Have you? Uh, I'll be. By the way, I will be getting you back on as well. Once, once we get up and going properly, I'm going to get you and Andy to come on together because. It was, yeah, that, that, it, it was requested. Um, we've got would, enough parts to get the mics and that plug. That, that would be good crack, yeah. Um, because, we, can talk, we can talk more about the hard house scene and the engineering. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but it's been a pleasure having you on. Um, where can people listen to your music? Um, what, what platform is you on? I'm just, I've got a SoundCloud. It's just it's just SoundCloud uh, forward slash Lee Mills. Right. No and there's, there's hard house mixes, trance mixes. Yeah. There is a big variety of stuff on there. Yeah, 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 I've, got, yeah. I've done a drum and bass mix as well, so there's quite a few things yeah. on it. Um, quite a versatile day. It's been a pleasure having you on, mate, and I've really enjoyed it. Thanks very much. And I'm sure everyone listening as well Hope will so. enjoy it as well yeah. because <laughs> honestly, it's, it's good when it's um, you're talking and stuff, and people's pe- people start to remember stuff that happened in the past, and you can tell when you talk about it, the smile on your face, and like like you're just nostalgic about it. But yeah, yeah, definitely going to get you on in the future, and um, we'll we'll get you and Andy on as a duo. Yeah, that'd be, uh, that'd be good. Thanks to everyone for listening. Thank um, you very much. Right, I'll see you later.